Okay, it's the end of the session. I'm here with my buddy, Max. Uh, Bessie is so anxious that she's outside and she's just gonna bark a lot. So Max, sit. So remember, you say the word and then if they do the action, they get rewarded. Uh, but they need, really need to do it within about two seconds of the action, otherwise they wouldn't get the reinforcement. Um, so the first thing we started talking about was exercise. Um, well, I guess before that, when, we met, when I met the dogs, we met on a staggered basis. Um, uh, and I'd like you to exercise the dogs before you have people come in. What I did was I basically, uh, and that click for looks video that's above is really gonna help with that. So I probably would practice that video first with a person two or three times before they actually come into your house to practice what I'm gonna talk about now. So um, what I would do is I'd exercise the dog first, give it 10 minutes of rest, so maybe the doggy stair master, go for a walk or whatever it is. Um, and then we've already practiced the engaged, disengaged uh, two or three times. And I would probably do a little bit of it as the person's walking up. So they walk from the street up, you're doing in, uh, the disengage part of the game. They get to the door, they come in, have them come in and have a bunch of treats and have them just kind of dropping treats on the ground. Now, a lot of us, we just only think about dropping the treats in front of the dog. Dogs are front facing, so I can throw a treat behind the dog and get the dog to move away. Dogs, when they're barking, they're trying to increase the distance between us. And when they bark at me, I usually, as a human, I usually leave. So we can throw a treat behind them and that gets them moving away. So I like using the Charlie Bears. Those are the ones that have the coat. So you're gonna make the sound on your tile floor. So don't just throw them in between the person. Throw them sometimes away, this way, that way. <laughs> For him, we have a spot in the video. So you saw he got stuck. That's his warning. So if he's just kind of hanging out, and all of a sudden it goes, and gets still and still. That's his thing that I'm not going to so let's go ahead and we'll go ahead and we'll take Charlie, uh, take Maxwell, let's put Maxwell outside because it's been a long time. And it's been a three hour session. And so this is way too long. When you're doing these visits, there you go, dad's got some treats. When you're doing these visits, you wanna keep them up. You can't bark at somebody to get the treats, buddy. He's like, but I was all session. Um, but the idea is we wanna keep the visits nice and short. We wanna exercise them first, have the person come in and, and the writ litany of what I'd like you to do is get lick mats because I think the lick mats are really, or the bully bites or bully sticks are really gonna help. And we'd like to have the person practice the uh, engage, disengage two or three times. The the vi and this is what might be over a couple days. Then when they actually come in, we do the engage, disengage. When they come in the door, have them stay right there and just have them toss treats around the ground. And you saw how quickly Max worked up, uh, warmed up to me. Um, and then, you know, aside from that, um, and then basically, um, I would like you to also teach them both how to catch, like I showed you. So you'd have, um, if I'm the person with Max, and Max is right here, somebody's where the camera is, they throw a treat, just go one toss and try to make it such a good toss that it's gonna go right in the dog's mouth if they open their mouth. And then you use a marker word. You use a click, every time that the dog catches it, you click. And after a while, when you can anticipate the dog's gonna do it, you say catch and throw it, and then the dog snags it out of the air. That's a wonderful game to allow the uh, dog to play, inter to interact with the person. You can also do the targeting game that I showed you. Uh, remember, if you chop, when you do it, don't go like this. Give it a good chop, the dogs are gonna see it. And if, I ch if the dog's face is here and I chop here, the dog doesn't go for it, I'm gonna pull back and chop closer. So keep it at the dog's nose level. Don't have it up here, then the dog's practicing lunging. Um, and that would be probably something good for you guys to practice yourselves before the guests come over. So once the guests actually come inside, Max has already gotten a bunch of these treats. I would have like a lick mat with peanut butter on it, put it on the ground, and then have the guests stay here for about five minutes or so. The dog is completely engrossed in the lick mat. He's practicing not barking, not being territorial, not charging. He's in a good mood. He's got a lot of treats. He's already conditioned that looking at the person is a good thing, and then looking away from the person is a good thing. And then eventually, the, uh, before the person leaves, maybe you drop a couple more treats or make sure they're engrossed in the snuffle mat, uh, or not for the snuffle mat, the lick mat. And for the lick mat, I would probably position it there so that the guests can eventually get up and leave your house without walking by the dog. That close proximity might create a reaction. And so what you wanna do is find some neighbors and people that you can have come over on a regular basis and practice. At first, maybe a five minute visit, then a seven minute visit, then a 10 minute visit. But the key is we want the dog to practice being in round with that person without barking or reacting at all. We set them up by getting them exercise. We do the engage, disengage game, uh, exercise before we uh, do the encounter. We practice the engage, get, disengage. They get a bunch of treats when they come in. And for Betsy, uh, Bessie, it's gonna take a little bit more practice for her. And her, she might be a good candidate to get some doggy Prozac just to help her practice relaxing for a couple months. And while we practice these exercises, if we ever in doggy Prozac, she should be able to do the same thing I did with Max, where we come in and we're dropping the treats and she's not barking at them. And I make sure you're doing this each dog separately. 
Um, this is really a, uh, something that uh, the reason this doesn't work for people is they do it once and they don't do it again for three weeks, they do it again. You really wanna do it, so make a, a commitment, you know, find a neighbor, hey, can you come by once a day for five, you know, five minutes to, five minute visit every day for a week? And then fit to different, get a different neighbor. So the idea is you're getting these momentum going. A lot of the, my clients that don't get the results are the ones that like do it once or twice and then they don't do it a couple weeks and they're like, it's not getting any better. Well, he, they, they practice doing these things. The difference is this practice just kind of occurred organically and naturally. Now we have to actually structure things and set up a situation so the dog actually is practicing the good behavior that we want. But we don't want them to be reactive at all. So be short, uh, shorter and successful as opposed to getting greedy and going for too long and then having the dog finish the lick mat and then going and barking at the person. All right, we also talked about, uh, we talked about exercise. So the doggy Stairmaster, make sure that that's not something uh, that uh, if they're showing any signs of injury, we wouldn't want to do that's a repetitive injury, so uh, repetitive activity, so it can lead to issues. Your dogs are young enough and they're really needing of energy burn, so I, that's why I'm comfortable doing it with you guys. But also Google scent games. Um, also uh, getting them bully sticks, uh, cow tracheas, uh, cow kneecaps are my dog's favorite because that's good for about five or six different chews. I would definitely get a couple snuffle mats. You can also get uh, Kongs, fill those with peanut butter, do the same sort of thing. There's also the puzzle games that you can do. I'd like them to go on walks. I'd love to see uh, the, the two athletes in the family taking the dogs out for a walk every, every day. So one of them picks one dog, one of them picks the other dog. We walk them separately. And it diff uh, it, we can walk in at the same time, but that might be a little difficult. So you might want to have one of them walk and then wait a couple minutes to take the next one out. Uh, but basically let them sniff as much as possible. So it doesn't have to be a marathon walk. 15 minutes, fine. We walk seven minutes this direction and we turn around at, uh, at, three, uh, seven, at seven minutes and walk back. So that's a 15 minute walk. It's not too much. But letting them sniff will be relaxing, it will burn energy, and it will be confidence building. So the idea is we want to come up with a routine where they're getting exercise and stimulation about every two to four hours. Um, and that sets them up for success. Also, we're going to exercise them before guests come over, before anything that's normally going to be off-putting for the dogs. Uh, we also talked about, uh, let me see, uh, well, a quick thing for the order. So if I'm doing the doggy Stairmaster, I'm going to show, if I'm at the top of the stairs, I'm going to throw the treat to the bottom of the stairs. When the dog gets to the bottom step, you would say, Jamaica, then they lick up the treat. So Jamaica means run down the stairs and get a reward. Then I show that I have a dog got another treat, it runs to the top of the stairs. When it gets the second to last step, I say Canada, then it gets the last step and I give it a treat. Um, and so Canada means run up the stairs. Um, so uh, you can also use the clicker when they get to the second to la uh, last step, you click and then give them the treat. But uh, the way that I showed you uh, before by saying the words is how you can incorporate a cue or what's known as a command word. I like to say cues because command words more of an order. Um, all right, so we also talked about, uh, let me see, uh, incorporating rules. Remember, uh, the more rules that you have does not make you mean. And as a matter of fact, both these dogs, I think the lack of rules has caused them some anxiety. So some of the rules we talked about is not being allowed to be in the, uh, around the dining room table when we're eating. We're going to stop giving them people food. Um, if you go to the website, uh, dog training tips section of uh, dog on problems, it'll be about two or three posts below yours. And it's going to be a video of uh, two Datsuns. And it's going to say a, a positive reinforcement way to teach dogs to uh, go to the dog bed instead of being in the kitchen. Just practice that, make sure you get a light, white, uh, white, light cream or light uh, gray dog bed with no pattern, no plaidness to it or paisleys because they won't see where those treats are. Um, and then just practice that. Remember, practice when nobody's, uh, just somebody's at the table, but there's no food. Practice all the different seats at the table, one dog at a time, then switch dogs. Then eventually two people at the table, three people at the table. And then eventually you can work out where you're at one person at the table eating, but not at your traditional meal time some other different time. So they kind of get accustomed to staying there. And it's also a great time to do it when there's no food at the table, just practicing for no reason whatsoever is a wonderful way to do it because the motivation is go to the dog bed to get the treat rather than going into the kitchen or preparing food or being around the dog, uh, around the dining room table or eating. I'd also like to incorporate some premax. That may, remember, a premax means uh, less desirable behavior earns me a more desirable behavior. So um, once a day, close the dog door for an hour. And every time they want to go outside, tell them, go to the door, say sit. If they sit within two seconds, open the door and let them out. If they don't sit within two seconds, sit down nearby, wait one minute. After one minute, go back to the door, tell them to sit again. If one of them sits, the other doesn't sit, I would open the door and let the one that sit go out. The other one doesn't. I'm getting paid, they're paying the dog based on performance. And eventually what will happen, the dogs will go sit at the door and ask to go out. So I say sit. If you don't sit within two seconds, I walk away, sit down for one minute. Next time I sit down for two minutes, then for four minutes, eight minutes, keep double length of time. But eventually they'll sit at the door. Um, I would do that anytime you're going to leash them up, when you're going to prepare their food, 
things along those lines. Now, I'd like you to also get two snuffle mats and start feeding the dogs in a structured way. Right now, the guardians are free feeding these dogs. I think these dogs will be much better. Uh, they'll have more respect for the guardians. They'll be more confident in knowing what time food comes and who provides the food. Remember, when one dog's eating, uh, when Max is eating, Bessie's not allowed to be near him. And when Bessie's eating, same thing. So after a while, the dogs start to understand the humans are controlling the situation. They're the providers of food, which makes me them have more authority or I'm more respectful of them. They make sure they cover my back when I'm eating. They don't let the other dog come up. When one dog is a bully stick, don't let Max come up to her and vice versa. So the more you intercede, for dogs, um, if you don't, if the, if the dogs do something and you don't intercede or disagree, that's your way of saying I'm cool with it. So if uh, Bessie has a bully stick and Max comes up to her and she growls and you don't disagree with Max or try to lure Max away, give him another bully stick or create a situation where he doesn't want him, she thinks, I'm on my own. I have to deal with this on my own. We want, again, that's another opportunity for you guys to demonstrate a good leader follower dynamic because you're taking care of these sort of things. Um, so you might also get an Omega Paw treat ball. That would be that orange ball that you can put their food in and let them nudge around the room when people are here. There are a whole bunch of treat dispensing toys and games that you can get. Go to Amazon or Chewy, the cheapest place to get them. Also, again, Google scent games and get them used to doing those. Those are great ways to drain some excess energy. Uh, let me see, what else? Um, uh, we talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. Petting with a purpose is petting your dog for a reason. So the dog comes up and nudges you, barks at you, paws at you. You tell the dog to sit. If it's already sitting, you tell it to sit here or here or tell it to lie down. Don't ask for a shake. If it sits within two seconds, try to pet it under its chin or anywhere in this area right here. Try to avoid reaching over the head. That kind of creates a cowering, fearful position for dogs. Um, and so if they, you dog, the dog comes up and tells you what to do, nothing happens. But if you tell the dog to, what to do as a counter order and it does it, it gets your attention. After a while, your dog will start sitting in front of you to prepay for the tension. When it does, make sure you reward and reinforce that. Otherwise, they'll go back to nudging you. Use the watch word of paycheck to remind anybody, I think you forgot to pet with the purpose. Even if you did it right, you would stop petting the dog, tell the dog to sit. If it sits, you pet and say, actually, I asked the dog to sit. You just missed it. But thanks for reminding me because I do forget to pet without a purpose. Take you guys about two months to get in the habit of doing that. But if you do, every time you pet your dog, it increases your dog's respect for you, it boosts your dog's confidence, it helps your dog practice basic commands, and it makes your pets more valuable. So it's really a four for, four for one. Um, I also want you to celebrate the things your dog does that you want. So every time the dog comes to you, try to, when it's one foot away as it's coming to you, say come, and then pet your dog. If it's about to sit, say sit before the butt hits the ground, and then pet him. If they're about to lay down, say crash or chill or whatever your word is, and then pet him. Uh, now, if you miss it, let's say, uh, let's say Max was here not, not uh, barking at me, and he walked up and somebody here on the couch saw it and said, David, celebrate. I just turn and I start petting Max right away. I've already missed my window, so I'm not going to say any words. I'm just going to reinforce that particular behavior. The more we pet our dogs for the things that they do, the more they're going to emulate those things. Right now, and remember, good attention, bad attention is the same thing. So I think these dogs have learned to bark to get their guardian's attention. And that's a hard habit to break. So you might want to practice putting that uh, paper up on your window, like I talked about, but the other thing is just close the door, maybe do it on your side windows. That way you can play the engage disengage game, which I would do quite a bit. I would try to uh, play the engage disengage game at least once a day. And you could probably do it with uh, the guys in the house. Um, they're probably just the motion. They probably won't even know who it is at first. And you could put parkas and stuff up there and they wouldn't know who it is. And you're practicing helping the dog not barking at people that come by and then seeing things outside is something that gets me a reward. Um, let me see, what else? Um, uh, the touch game, practice that touch game. Uh, I have video for that. If you forget how to do that, let me know. But it'd be nice if everybody in the house did that with each dog once a day. Um, and then that way, after a while, when you, uh, the dogs are here and they're a little nervous, you play the touch game. And again, remember you can have one person over here and somebody sit on the couch and have the dog going back and forth, eventually up down the stairs. That's a nice way to do it instead of just throttle swapping the treats. And then when you have guests come over, that can be something that they could do. You, you do about four or five touches, and then you hand the guests some treats, and then they go like this, and the dog just comes over and sticks his nose on there. It's a way to get the dog to engage with us um, where the dog is doing it on its own. And so it's a positive thing for the dog. Approaching someone is a good thing. Um, I like doing it. I'm initiating the contact, and I control how close to them I get and whether I want to or not. And if the dog doesn't want to do it, that's okay. Then you guys just go ahead and practice it much yourselves. Um, I'm trying to think. Is there anything else you want me to go over? It's like I've done this before. 
<laughs> All right, well, um, now you guys are gonna have questions. Uh, when they come up, just please text me. The number I called you from is my personal cell. Please program that in your phone and put down Dog Gone Problems at the company name so you can always search for dog. Um, I really would like to send Laura. Uh, Laura's our fearful animal specialist. I think she would be great, but I will send you guys a link to, if I forget to send the email and I don't send a link to the veterinary behaviors, Remind me of that. Sometimes I'm a basket case. I don't remember all these things. Uh, but remind me and I'll put that in there because I really think that if you can get her on some meds for about four or five months, just through the spring, help her practice the engage, disengage, and help her get out of a habit of barking at people, she's going to be more relaxed. As you saw, that impacts Max. Then Max is going to be more relaxed and both of them get out of a habit of doing this. All of a sudden, you guys get in the spring, coronavirus is done. You're like, wow, our dogs don't bark at anybody ever. I should probably give David that five-star review he asked me to get. <laughs> um, so please let me know if you have any questions. I, if I don't hear from anything I, uh, from you, I can't help you. And I've had people call me six or seven years after I've worked with them. But texting me is maybe the fastest way to reach me. All right, well, I'm David, and this is uh, uh, Max and, uh, and uh, Bessie's Roadmap to Success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog. Only sometimes you mean it. All right.